Welcome to the City Current Show, powered by Hagen Botham Insurance and Financial Services. This show focuses on sharing good news and powering the good in our community. Now here's your host, City Current CEO, Jeremy Park. Welcome back to the City Current Show, powered by Hagen Botham. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good. And we always love talking about men of valor. And that's why we're honored to have with us Mark Hodge, reentry team lead with Men of Valor. How are you doing? Good morning, Jeremy. I'm doing really well, brother. Thanks for having me on today. Appreciate you, bro. Absolutely. Well, we love Men of Valor. We'll talk all about your efforts, your impact, how the community can get involved. Let's start with your background and what led you to get involved with Men of Valor. Ooh, yeah, it's a long story, brother. But at 37 years old, the Lord got a hold of me from a lifestyle of drug abuse and steroids and promiscuity and drinking and the whole works. And um I, I was going a whole different direction and and God put me on my butt and said, uh, hey, I'm going to take you a whole nother direction. So at that time, I was living in the Philadelphia area, uh, ended up moving here to Nashville about five years ago, uh, got involved with a men's group. A gentleman from my men's group said, hey, I think your story would relate great to these men. So he invited me to Men of Valor, came here, became a uh, volunteer for a couple months. Uh, at that point, I was going through my master's degree at Liberty University for Christian leadership and church ministry ministry. Uh, and that was through COVID. So that was a blessing. Essentially, we just became a monk and grew with the Lord. And then this door opened up and uh, Men of Valor was uh, just welcoming. And I loved it. And I felt at home. And then shortly after a position came open. And uh, so I've been here about three years now and uh, blessed to serve here. Well, and I think that helps to paint the picture when you talk about Men of Valor. Like, what you do as an organization. And like you mentioned, the ability to connect, but then the Christ piece of this too. So that's why I kind of figured, let's start with your personal story and then we'll dive in. So let's go ahead and dive into Men of Valor. When you talk about Men of Valor overall as an organization, give us a little bit of the, the mission, the purpose. Let's start there. Yeah, brother. So our mission is to win men in prison to Jesus Christ and disciple them uh, our purpose is to uh, equip men to reenter society as men of integrity, uh, men that are going to be givers to society rather than takers. Uh, we are a presence inside of the prisons, and that's where the men hear about us. Uh, my specific role is here in Antioch, Tennessee, where I oversee the team that oversees this campus, where we can house 93 men directly out of incarceration. Uh, we also have a campus in Knoxville, Tennessee, that can house 30 additional men. Uh, and our aim is to put them through gospel center programming for 30 days to keep them grounded in the word. And then on day 31, we are blessed with wonderful job partners in the community that are willing to give our men another opportunity and chance. Uh, we have hard workers that are, are it's very difficult to find work after you have a background and a, and a rap sheet, whereas some of these our guys have. But uh, we've been blessed with just wonderful job partners. And uh, so these men go in and, and they work 40 hours a week and uh, they have classes that they come back to in the evening evenings and it's a one year program. So, you know, it just one year almost doesn't seem enough for for some of the things these men have been through and some have put themselves through, but it's a start to give them a foundation uh in the word of God and and hopefully uh uh what they learn and and grow with here will be taken with them for the rest of their lives. Absolutely. Talk about some of those challenges specific to reentry. When you look at yeah. coming out and, you know, having then the basic necessities and the lodging, the skills, the financial literacy, like all of these things that you don't just, you know, jump out and get thrown back into society. Unfortunately, that is what happens, but that's not realistic in terms of them finding right. success. And so talk about their challenges, but then obviously how you're able to provide that foundational support so that they can find success. Yeah, brother, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, the things that we take for granted, having an ID, having a bank account, having a birth certificate, having a social security card, um, having fellowship and family that love us and support us and take care of us. Uh, not all of these men have, uh, many have broken or burnt bridges with their family. And, and we're here to welcome them in, 
open arms, say, hey, we believe in you. Um, one thing, when we think about incarceration, oftentimes we think about justice. We think about people getting what they deserve. We, we think about a place for the wicked. And those things are certainly true. Uh, but also Jesus tells us to go into the prisons and I need you to share the good news. And, and there is hope and there is forgiveness. And that's what we're here. So every man that steps foot on our campus, we're, we're, we're welcoming them as a new man, a, a man we're, we're seeing past their past and saying, hey, uh, the other thing that these men struggle with is, you know, we often look at their what they've done, but but we miss the action steps or, or the suffering that they may have gone through early in their childhood that led them to make them decisions. And we do not give them an excuse and God gives them no excuses. But what we do say we, we start to uh, maybe for the first time unveil the things that they went through uh, so that we can start working with them because they've been bottled up for so many years and, and uncomforted and unrestrained suffering will also oftentimes lead to uh, careless and sinful decisions. So we're here to see the man as a, a new man and say, hey, we want to walk alongside of you. We want to get you to your divine purpose to which God has created you for. We want you to be a messenger and, and, and multiply. God says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So we're here to build laborers, but there's there's so many hindrances to that, like you said, that when a man gets out of prison, they, they don't they don't have a place to go. They don't have the financial resource. Some can't get a bank account because they burnt those bridges. Uh, it's very difficult to get birth certificate. And how can you get to these places if you don't have transportation? Uh, so the, it's 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 no wonder that the recidivism rate is so high. Meaning that within three years after a man is released from incarceration, he's going back because he doesn't have the support system. So ultimately that's what we're here for. And, and you know, we you have an option when, when a gentleman gets out of incarceration, we can allow him go back in the streets, but we ultimately know what's gonna go, be the end result of that. But but we, we wanna stop that and we wanna reduce recidivism. And the gentleman that, uh, the gentleman that um, graduated our program after a year, uh, their recidiv recidiv uh, recidivism rate decreases to about 15%. And we're very proud of that statistic. And, and that's um, partially because the structure and programming that we have in place, but mainly because God touches the lives of these men and, and really sets them on a new trajectory. You definitely don't have to name specific names, but give us an illustration, a success story of how this plays out. Yes, absolutely. So so I'm thinking about my team currently. We have eight of us on the aftercare team. And right now we have four gentlemen on the team who have been graduates of our program. These were four men that have been incarcerated for much of their lives. Uh, their rap sheet is very long, uh, broken bridges between their families. And here they are coming out, went through our program uh, submitted and surrendered to what we had to offer, submitted and surrendered their lives to uh, God. And here we are, um, four of them just being able to relate to the men of this uh, program is so important. When men come in and they say, man, this is really difficult, but then they look at these four gentlemen that are on staff and they go, well, you did it and look at your life and look, look at all the ways that God has restored your family and, and your finances and, and look at the fellowship that you have around you and look at the love and the goodness and, and all the faithfulness, all, all these things you have in your heart. I want that. And I didn't think it was ever possible, but look at you. So I, I, I turn to the four men that we have on staff that are just an absolute blessing. Um, but there's just so many. It's not, some of the greatest stories are the men being reconciled to their children. You know, I, I truly believe that all children, no matter how hard uh, their lives have been with their fathers, they want their fathers in their lives. They they need their fathers in your life. That That's God's design. And, and um, a lot of these men come and, and just start talking to their children for the first time in many years. So, so those are our, our greatest joys that, that we get, the kind of the fruits that we see uh, of the ministry. Absolutely. That's awesome. Carrying yeah. into the job opportunities, because that is a big piece of this, is the financial opportunities, the stability it provides, the opportunity for growth. So mm -hmm. talk about the employers and that critical piece of job opportunities. Absolutely. Again, our, our, um, 
job partners are fantastic. You know, they they uh, they'll do a background check, but ultimately they'll overlook the background check of a lot of these guys. So I, well, I, I guess you got to go through the proper steps. But um, we're, we're grateful for it, and because um, we we have great partners such as WM and 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 Talus and Cabinar and all these places who. Um, of course, they start out with one or two men and say, hey, let's just see how this goes. I'm not sure if this is right for our company or not, but let's let's check it out. And then when they see our men and uh, Men of Valor transports them to and from work for the entirety of their stay with us. So they're going to be reliable. Uh, they're going to be held accountable. Um if there's any issues on the job site, hey, we want to partner with you to work with this man, to counsel this man, to get the help he needs so that he can be uh, effective and, and an asset to your uh, place of business. So we're partnering with the, the management of the companies to say, let's do all we can to help these men. So our greatest job partners are, of course, those that, you know, they have to make money and they, and they have to build a business, but, but more so they care about the hearts of our men and, and they they partner along and link arms with us to say hey we we care about your work ethic absolutely but we also care about you as a man and we want to see how we can help you to the best of our ability so uh we're just blessed with with close to 20 job partners that have been just been absolutely fantastic and still looking always looking for job partners that align with our mission and are really uh partner up with us and care for our men and and just provide great opportunities because we have some fantastic workers and untapped potential uh inside of our men carry that into then other ways that the community can support your efforts yeah, thank you for asking. Uh, first and foremost, prayer. Uh, we could not do this without the Lord. Uh, he has sustained us for uh, coming up on 28 years, which has just been an absolute blessing. Um, of course, when we talk about the incarcerated, we talk about the hurting, we talk about the broken, the struggling. So uh, it can be dangerous work, but I tell you, the Lord has really protected this ministry for for coming up on 28 years. So we need prayer. We need a, a um, prayer for God's provision, financial support. Um, financially is another way that people can get um, involved with us. Of course, it's uh, it's uh, it's costly to to keep our our campuses running. We're also opening a uh, ministry in Chattanooga, which we're really excited about. Um, so we are Men of Valor is a thriving ministry, and and we we feel it's really very much so needed in our community. Uh, Volunteers, goodness, we we love um, we we have a family ministry where where women can come and be a part of. Uh, majority of our volunteer work would be for men. We we need men to come alongside of our men and share their stories and the testimonies about how God has touched their heart and come and mentor our guys or maybe teach a class. Um, so we have so many ways to get involved with the uh, volunteer work. And if you're like me who came on as a volunteer, you're not going to want to leave. Uh, this is going to bless you more than it blesses some of the men. But I'll tell you this, the men understand that you're taking time out of your schedule to be with them. And that is so important. They understand that they feel that. Um, so, so those are the great ways. And, and I'll, I'll plug this out there. It's a, uh, March 26th is going to be our annual breakfast. This is our 28th anniversary. Uh, so that's March 26th at the Music City Center. Uh, that is an open invitation for anybody who wants to hear more about our ministry. And that is a day that is just full of uh, uh, blessings and, and worship and praise reports. And, and it's a morning that you won't forget. Touch on the growth, the expansion. I mean, you've been alluding to it throughout, but dive in a little deeper on that side. Yeah, fantastic. Like I said, we opened our Knoxville uh, campus location, housing 30 more men. Uh, we're going to start with a case management model in Chattanooga, which we're very much so excited about. Uh, we started Spanish ministry inside of the jails. So so we've taken our uh, reading plans, which, we, which we've done here on campus, and put that into to Spanish. And uh, we're going into more jails. We we're, we have a presence inside of all 14 state prisons inside of the state of Tennessee. But I believe that we're, we're expanding with jails, which is fantastic. Um, let's see, what else? <laughs> oh, goodness, we, we have a building right outside my walls here, a massive building. That is fantastic. This is going to be a blessing because right now we are uh, working in trailer trailers that are kind of a uh, 
falling apart almost a little bit. So, uh, yeah, we, we are going to have a new building that'll be a, a ministry and workforce development center. Uh, it's going to have our classrooms. It's going to have offices, conference rooms, a fitness center for the men, a laundry facility for the men, a music center, a prayer room. So this is something we're super excited about. We broke ground. It's, it's moving. We're hoping sometime in 2025 that's going to be uh, finished up and ready to move into. So, all these things are just super excited, and and and, and I'll say this, Jeremy, we, we we have an open invitation for people that want to come check out what we have going on up here. So, um, if you have your interest in just touring the campus, because I think once people roll up to this campus, they go, "Oh my gosh, I, I had no idea that." This was here. I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea that the movement of God. We say people would come up on this campus and go, uh, just feel and see the presence of God. This is holy ground up here. And that's our aim to keep this the safest place for a man to grow and thrive. Yeah, I love it. Wrap up with website, contact information. Where do we go to learn more and get involved with Men of Valor? Amen. So, so men of valor.org uh, would be our website. And then, uh, Facebook and and uh, Instagram. Instagram, I, I know, is uh, MOV10 is our handle. Um, and then, yeah, just just when you're on our website, just check out some of our um, podcasts. Check out some of our uh, put a word on it, we call it, and you'll hear a lot of the testimonies and the stories of the men we work with. It's going to touch your heart. You're going to you're going you're gonna to want to get involved with what God is doing up here and. Uh, just, just call and reach out. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has. But, uh, man, this has been a blessing for me. So th- thank you for having me, man. Absolutely. Mark Hodge, reentry team lead with Men of Valor. Thank you for all you and your amazing team do to power the good. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, brother. God bless y'all. Take care. Higginbotham Insurance and Financial Services is proud to power the City Current Show. We're a people-first company that protects what matters most, the families, businesses, and trailblazers that keep our community going. As one of the nation's top independent insurance firms, Higginbotham is a single-source solution for business insurance, employee benefits, HR services, and personal insurance that's customized for you. We're here to serve you, the people you care about, and your community. Call 866-377-1959 or visit Higginbotham.com.